Campbell County Schools are getting a nearly $1 million grant. State Senator Ken Yeager explains to WLAF that four grants benefit Scott, Fentress, and Campbell Counties. The GEAR grant is for a Campbell County collaborative and will help students in Campbell County gear up for success in college. It provides students with direct services including mentoring, tutoring, college visits, and financial aid counseling. In total, Campbell County Schools will receive $984,847.50 over the next seven academic years to increase the number of students transitioning to a succeeding in higher education. Campbell County Sheriff Robbie Goins announced this week his office's creation of a newly formed DUI task force. With the usage of narcotics in today's society, we are witnessing an increase in drugged, intoxicated drivers versus alcohol-induced drivers, and we plan to put people in place to strictly enforce and focus on protecting and saving lives along our roadways anywhere you travel in Campbell County. The sheriff says if you drive intoxicated in Campbell County, you will go straight to jail. No breaks, no excuses. The recent rash of church burglaries have had Campbell County deputies and detectives working overtime the past couple of weeks. Sheriff Goins tells WLAF that confessions, statements, and warrants were wrapping up this morning after suspects were taken into custody late yesterday. Chief Deputy Aaron Evans outlines that five Valley Area churches, most recently Glade Springs Baptist Church, were broken into and vandalized over the last week or two. Sheriff Goins stopped by WLAF and had this to say about the burglaries. We have, uh, in the past few weeks had several uh, churches and home burglaries. Uh, we've been working tirelessly for at least two weeks. Uh, the last night uh, we have we got a break and uh, we are currently uh, collecting evidence, doing interviews, and, and uh, we've got three suspects, uh, firm suspects, in uh, the churches and uh, the residential burglaries. Um, it appears we have two juveniles and one adult that has been involved. Uh, it was important for us to let uh, everybody in the county know that uh, we have, we think, come to a good solid conclusion to these break-ins and the vandalism. Uh, so we wanted to let everyone know that we're still working tirelessly and, and we're working hard on, on these break-ins and the, and the vandalism. Uh, we want the people of Campbell County to feel secure in their homes and especially their place of worship. This has been a, a, a really disturbing thing when uh, these churches get broken into and vandalized. But uh, like I say, I think we've we're going to have a good conclusion out of this. We we're currently today collecting evidence that has been scattered from one end of Campbell County to the other. Um, it appears that these break-ins and vandalism have also spread into Claiborne and Anderson County. That's the, the way it appears today. And uh, we're working with those agencies to, to, uh, to try to get some closure on those, their cases they have. But uh, we should have more information Monday, but it was important for us to let Campbell County know that we have got good solid leads. It appears that we know who done this and that we're going to be pursuing uh, the arrest warrants Monday, if not sooner. And as of today, we're, as I said earlier, collecting our evidence, uh, doing interviews, tying up our loose ends because we want a good solid case on uh, all these, these incidents, but uh, we'll have more Monday, let you guys know what we've got, and, and uh, we'll have names Monday, 
but at the present time we didn't want to, to jeopardize any integrity as far as our investigation so Monday we'll try to do another, another news uh, release and, uh, and bring everybody up to date thank you WLAF welcomes a new business in town it's designer choice consignment and the grand opening is going on now DCC features quality furniture home furnishings antiques custom constructed picnic tables and they even provide firewood designer choice consignment is open Monday through Saturday across from food line on the General Steiner Highway east of La Folle long hours long lines lots of voting that's the short story of the latest round of early voting as it ended yesterday ahead of the November 6th election Carol Joe Nelson with the Election Commission office tells WLAF that 413 Campbell Countyans cast ballots in person on Thursday Nelson notes that it was a busy day and at least 10 to 15 people showed up way too late yesterday to early vote. So far, 5,684 people have voted early, including totals of mail-in ballots through this morning. The Campbell County Children's Center will have a roadblock in La Follette tomorrow, Saturday, from 8 a.m. until 12 noon. Tracy Davis and Maggie Ensko tells us about the roadblock and what the money collected will go for. Hi, my name is Tracy Davis. I'm with the Campbell County Children's Center, and I'd like to invite you out this Saturday, November 3rd, from 8 to 12 at Red Light Number 7 for a road drive. Um, all proceeds go to the Campbell County Children's Center, and we help serve physically and sexually abused kids in Campbell County. Maggie, if you don't care to share a little bit of the statistics with the community of, of some of the numbers that we do. And then our Child Protective Investigative Team, our SIPIT cases reviewed, 308 cases in Campbell County, 172 in Claiborne, and 136 in Union County. That's a lot of kids. That's a lot of cases, and we need to bind together and support the Campbell County Children's Center. With that, we, we reviewed 616 severe cases of child abuse in the three counties that we serve, which is Campbell, Claiborne, and Union Counties. Um, what we want the community to know is everything that we provide to the community is free of charge. We do not bill the victim nor the family for the services. So all the mental health services, the sexual assault exams, and er every bit of that, um, we're able to do that because of contributions from the community and some grant funding. Um, and if you've not been to the Children's Center, we would love for you to, to call and come see it. And um, we're very proud of it. We're located in behind Roan State Community College. We've been in our new building for, um, it was actually a year this month. And we've, we've come a long way. But there's definitely a need, and the roadblock will help to generate some revenue that we were not able to secure through grant funding. Again, we'll be out there from 8 to 12. It, your change dollar, whatever you can do, it will be greatly appreciated. And just know that it will provi provide direct services to the children of Campbell County. Thank you. Thank you. The Jacksboro City Council made short work of last night's meeting under grievances from citizens H.R. Douglas of Woodvine Street brought forward a complaint about barking dogs in his neighborhood. Council members told Douglas that they would work on it for him. Council also agreed to get pricing for road markings to Stripe Main Street. It voted to incorporate into its building permits new pricing for electrical and plumbing inspections to meet state requirements. Council agreed to get interest quotes for a capital outlay note for funding a fire truck and other equipment. New library hours were expanded. The Jacksboro Library now has expanded hours. Its new hours are Monday through Friday from 9 to 5. Jacksboro policeman Wesley Mongar tendered his resignation. Council voted to clean out files on employees every six months. The voice of the Cougars, Adam Smith of WLAF, finds himself 
in the middle of Cougar craziness this evening. The former All-District Cougar basketball player plans to take part in the alumni game, which is just one of the many fun festivities set to begin at 6 o'clock at John R. W. Brown Gymnasium. As the Cougars and Lady Cougars officially open practice, each squad plays a couple of brief orange and blue games along with a three-point shootout, a hot shot contest, and more. Coaches Ryan Browning and Matthew Housley welcome you to join in the fun. And that's a look at our news for this Friday. We'll be back with a press release from the Sheriff's Department after this. And taking a look at the press release from the Campbell County Sheriff's Department, 13 people have been booked into the jail in the past 24 hours. Joseph M. Brooks, age 37, of Old Middlesboro Highway and Speedwell, for violation of parole. 18-year-old Dalton Bussell of Sleepy Hollow Road and Speedwell for driving while suspended and violation of the Tennessee financial law. 40-year-old Christopher Lee Burge of Breezeway Lane in Caraville on an attachment for child support. Daniel Keith Carroll, age 30, of Lake Road Caraville for violation of community corrections and violation of probation. 21-year-old Joshua Cox of Sawmill Lane and Duff on a capius. Dexter Fitzpatrick, 24, of Jellicoe for theft of property under $500, vandalism under $500, and initiating a false report. Daniel Boone Hall, 64, of Tennessee Lane and Caraville for fourth offense DUI, violation of the Tennessee financial law, hit and run, driving while revoked or suspended, third offense. Jamie A. Hoover, 22, of Newcomb for burglary, theft of property between $10,000 and $59,000, vandalism, vandalism over $500, criminal trespassing, filing a false report or bomb threat, possession of drug paraphernalia, evading arrest, and violation of probation. 30-year-old Joseph Crockett King of Sugar Hollow Drive, La Follette, disorderly conduct. Christopher William Corey, 32, of Beals Lane in La Follette, was picked up and held for another agency. 45-year-old Albert Lee Moore of Jenny Lane in La Follette for filing a false report. Richard Ralph Sofa the third, age 21, of Ridner Lane in Jacksboro for violation of the light law, possession of a Schedule VI controlled substance, and possession of drug paraphernalia. And last on today's report, Lonnie Lee Wilson, 42, of Jones Trailer Lane in La Follette for public intoxication and destruction of evidence. And that's a look at the news for this Friday. We hope you have a great, happy, and safe weekend. And be sure to join us back here Monday, and we'll bring you the latest news. We sing happy birthday to you. And may all your dreams come true. Happy, happy birthday. Oh, oh, oh. This is your birthday song. Oh, oh, oh. Celebration all night long. Oh, oh, oh. May all you Good Friday evening, Campbell County. Jason Shockley here with you for your WLAF and Eastside Pizza and Deli Birthday and Anniversary Club for this Friday, November the 2nd. We don't have any anniversaries to announce, so we'll go straight into your birthdays. We have a few for today. That is Sue Smith, Madison Griffith, and Mackenzie Faith Peebly, who turns five years old today, celebrating birthdays. We want to wish each and every one of you a very happy birthday and hope that you've enjoyed your very special day. And it's time now to announce this week's winners for two free dinners to Eastside Pizza and Deli. 
from the anniversaries and the birthdays. Our anniversary winner this week is Linda and Ernest Miller. Linda and Ernest Miller win the anniversary drawing this week for two free dinners to East Side Pizza and Deli. The birthday winner this week is Jonah Brassfield. Jonah Brassfield wins the birthday drawing this week. I want to congratulate both of you. Hope that you enjoy your free dinners to East Side Pizza and Deli and want to remind everyone listening that you can call us, email us, or fax us anytime this coming week and have your birthday and anniversary announced right here on TV Channel 12, Radio 1450, and be eligible for next Friday's drawing for two free dinners to East Side Pizza and Deli. As always, we thank you for tuning in, and we invite you to stay tuned. Your news continues after this. <laughs> 